Big Questions with the Dead Milkman. So today's or tonight's big question is uh, more of a request. Um, it is, tell us your top five best vocalists of all time. I realize that's not really the best way to ask the question, but you know what I'm trying to ask. Um, Who are? So the five that I listed are in no particular order. Freddie Mercury. Amy Winehouse, Eric Burden of the Animals, James Brown, Janis Joplin. No, I'm not sure about Janis, but yeah, well, because a lot of that, a lot of that was re-engineered. Yeah, yeah. But so I don't know if you guys want to debate any of those. Well, tell them, tell us what you like about each one of them, if you can. Well, I think Freddie Mercury, one of the things that's so impressive to me is the range, like how he, and it's, and it's like a consistently like beautiful sound with everything. Some people, their range, like the higher up is like not so great or the lower is not so awesome. I was going to say Leonard Cohen, but he can only do like so much. Um, Amy Winehouse has just a really great way of capturing this kind of like, like a 60s sound, but it's not, you know, she's, it's like a more modern, and she's singing about modern things. I don't know, it's just, she's dead, but um, Eric Burden is just amazing. He just had, like, you look at this guy and you're like, oh, okay, but he's got this just, I don't know, like the, there's like a deepness, like a soul in his voice. Um, James Brown can do anything with his voice. I, well, he's dead too, but <laughs> James Brown, uh, and the famous flames live at the Apollo theater in 1962, I think it is, is one of the greatest live albums I've ever heard in my life. He's like flawless, his voice. And yeah, Janis Joplin um, just sounds like, like she has like soul too, but maybe like too many cigarettes or something, but, but she can keep it on in, in key. And I don't know. I just think she died too soon for us to really know like how good of a singer she could have been. I don't know. I just feel like you can feel emotion in her. Singing. Freddie Mercury had it all. He had a four octave range. He had control and he had phrasing. You never find all those things together. People ask if he, why he didn't fix his teeth because he had an interesting looking teeth. And he said he thinks that maybe his voice would be different if he had different teeth. So yeah, those are my top five. All right, cool. Um, so I chose to list five female vocalists that I like at this particular time. I'm not really subscribing to the of all time philosophy. So I'll just list five female singers that I really like right now. Of all um, of your time. How's that? You're what's that? Of all of your time. You're right, of all of my time. Just this moment, of all this time. <laughs> right <now. laughs> She's not Miss Right. She's Miss Right now. Right. While well, you're watching this. Yeah. Um, number one, uh, I'm going to say Florence Shaw. And you say, who is Florence Shaw? She is the singer of a, of, of a new band from England called Dry Cleaning. She's not a traditional singer, but she talks, sings in sort of non sequiturs and odd observations. I, I've heard that she sort of walks around and keeps little... Uh, notes of weird signs and things that she just thinks of while riding the tube in London or whatever. Um, you check out the track New Long Leg. We'll provide links to all these, of course. Um, number two, I'm going to say Holly Fulbrook, who uh, has a band or she, she goes by Tiny Ruins when she performs live. Um, she does beautiful pop music. She's from New Zealand. And you should check out the track, Me at the Museum, You at the Winter Gardens. Um, the video link that I'm going to show you, um, I found today. Uh, I didn't realize it was made by Neil Finn from the band Crowded House while they were on tour together. So it's, it's kind of interesting. Um, number three is an old friend of ours who is still making music and has uh, a solo record coming out. Or, uh, Kathy McCarty. <laughs> Um, solo and with uh, a, a great band from the uh, mid to late 80s called Glass Eye, good friends of ours. Uh, bass player Brian and Glass Eye produced three records by the Dead Milkman. Um, <clears throat> she has a beautiful alto uh, range voice, which is, uh, you know, different from a lot of uh, women singers. Um, check out her song Living Life. 
Um, you can also check out her version of the song Rocket Ship, which we also covered. She has a whole album of Daniel Johnston songs um, called Dead Dog's Eye Ball, which you should really check out because there are some really great covers on there. And the last song I'm going to reckon from, recommend from Kathy is Glass Eye song called Christine, which is a beautiful uh, song. There's a, a link to it. You check it out. It's really lovely. Um, number four, I'm going to go back in time to one of my early faves um, from the late 70s, early 80s, um, Debbie Harry from, of course, Blondie. I mean, she's unique and original and amazing. Um, check out the uh, link that I have for the song called Dreaming, which is one of uh, my favorite songs by them. And uh, one of my favorite drummers, Clem Burke, works his ass off in this song. It's actually, you just watch the, they cut to the drummer a lot in this video, which is pretty amazing. Um, and then number five, another uh, woman from back in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, Chrissy Hine from The Pretenders, and I'm going to link to um, their performance of Tattooed Love Boys. Enough said. That's well, it. Dan, are you allergic to Kathy McCarthy? Because when we said her name, you see, yeah, maybe maybe it's Tiger's dog powder. And we don't I'm just that. thinking, has anybody, have any of us ever sneezed while we've been recording one of these? I, we, I, I have no functionality. I'm pretty good I'm my pants time without any of us yeah. sneezing. I don't know. I've sharted. I broke um, <laughs> okay, um, moving along, because I got to get through these. Um, I, I put rules on mine. Uh, one was they had to be rock and roll adjacent, so I wouldn't be going like, oh, Placido Domingo really does it for me. <laughs> and um, also they had to be none of my friends and nobody I've worked with. And I've, I've worked with a whole lot of people uh, in the last decade. So that way there's no fighting amongst people. So number one is a man by the name of Eugene Record. Uh, some of you may not know who he is. He was the lead singer for the Shy Lights. And he sang two of my favorite songs, which were um, Oh Girl and Have You Seen Her. And he does it in such a way where he's not being flashy. And a lot of these are almost, there's a lot of spoken stuff in him. And you can't be flashy if you're going to be the sort of downtrodden guy who's lost a girl as heartbreak. So it's absolutely perfect. Uh, he unfortunately died uh, in 2005, but Beyonce sampled him uh, in 2003. So he did go out up on the charts, which is which is great for Eugene Record. But beautiful human being, beautiful voice. Um, next, I'm going to say, and I'm wearing the shirt, it's Ronnie James Dio and the number four spot. Um, I saw Ronnie James Dio uh, singing with Black Sabbath when I was 16. I still cannot hear out the left side of my head. Um, and it was worth it. It's like I, I, I lost my teeth when I blocked the puck, but it was worth it. It was worth losing my hearing. Ronnie James Dio, just a beautiful voice, a, a, a powerful voice. Uh, you know, Holy Diver, he was that Neon Nights. The Heaven and Hell album is one of my favorite albums of all time. Just amazing. I like him a bit better than um, Ozzy. And I just want to say there is a uh, Dio documentary out now called Dreamers Never Die. And I really, really want to see that. So, and, and it's just full of people saying nice things about Ronnie James Dio. And he, and he gave us this. Um, so the next one on my list, Diamanda Gallus. Uh, some people say, oh, we'll talk about a singer. No, she has a voice like an angel. Diamanda Gallus has a voice like a pit full of demons screeching away in the bowels of hell, and I am 100% here for it. I love that. I hate I hate when there's a, a like very clean female vocalist, and I know that's the big trend in indie rock to sing like a little girl. Diamanda Gallus does not sing like a girl. She howls. She screams. She's absolutely amazing. It's guttural. It's fantastic. And a lot of the music I listen to, she's now she's been an influence on. So if you hear like Wish Dance by the Vestral Mouse, you can hear the Diamanda Gallus influence in that. Diamanda Gallus is to music what Kenneth Anger is to film. Remember that. Uh, up next in the number two spot, somebody who actually does sing like an angel, Lisa Gerard from Dead Can Dance. And also she does solo stuff. Um, her voice is like like watching somebody sing a flight simulator. You're going up, down, in the valleys, and she's she's does vocalizations. It's never lyrics. Um, and, and another great thing, she's so good that the people who, at Slate, the music reviewers, had no idea who she is. They did a whole thing about people who sing in like made up languages, and they didn't mention Lisa Gerard. And somebody in the comments put, "Why no Lisa Gerard?" Like, well, we don't know who that is. Life in, life in Williamsburg, folks. Uh, and then in the number one spot, this is it. Here it comes, number one. And this should be number one on every list. Klaus Nomi. Ooh. 
Oh, yeah. Kla yeah, seriously. Klaus Nomi is the best of the best. If you people don't know who Klaus Nomi is, we'll put a link. There's a thing showing Klaus Nomi's debut at a thing called New Wave Vaudeville, which took place in Irving Plaza in New York in 1978. And it was a bunch of goofy acts. Like people would come out and dance naked or have floppy guitars and stuff. And this guy comes out and does this incredible operatic vocalization. It's amazing. And after that night, when they bring him out again, the MC of the show would have to tell the audience, this is not, he's not lip syncing. This is not some track playing somewhere. This is him doing it live. Um, if you ever get a chance, people shout, and, and uh, we'll probably have a link. Klaus Nomi doing the cold song is, it, it just breaks your heart. And it's it's beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, he was there with David Bowie on Saturday Night Live in 1979 when they did TVC 15, Boys and Men uh, Who Sold the World. And it was a life-changing thing for me. I was like, oh, so this can be rock and roll too. Um, and Klaus is just amazing. He's become a bit of an icon in the last couple of years. He died, unfortunately, of, of complications from AIDS in 1983. So he was one of the first artists to die from AIDS. Um, and he's actually gone on. People have rediscovered him. Uh, and in the latest season of American Horror Story, Vienna and I were just flabbergasted because they basically had a Klaus Nomi character. They had somebody who, who was Klaus Nomi. And I thought that, you know, I just wish he had lived to see that people were, you know, just talking about how amazing he was. Yep. So those are my, uh, those are my top five. And now we go to Joe. I also had Janice Joplin on my list for her, for her singing. Uh, soprano, blues, rock stuff. And then um, also Aretha Franklin. She was in, the, I, I saw in the Blues Brothers movie, uh, Think, R-E-S-P-E-C-T, Respect. Uh, yes, many. She has a great soulful voice, big voice. Um, also Perry Como who was influenced by Bing Crosby. Uh, <laughs> he has a very, I love, I love his smooth delivery uh, of the songs. <laughs> um, and I came across him through the thrift shop, uh, bargain <laughs> bins, <laughs> 25 cent albums. <laughs> and I thought they would be funny, but I actually like them. Um, <laughs> John Lennon of the Beatles. I think he was, a, he gave all the songs the right emotions. And uh, I don't, to me, those songs are best sung by him. Those Beatles songs, when they're covered, they're not as good. Uh, and I guess I have one more, and that's uh, Bob Dylan. A lot of people think his voice is terrible, but I find it charming funny and there, there's a lot of variety to the ways he sings as well and he gives the songs just what they need emotionally so shane perry como never got to sing a duet with the amanda gallus momo and neo I, <laughs> yeah. yeah great choices everyone that was that was that was all over the place. Yeah. yeah. There are gonna be a lot people go to the links section this week and just spend just spend all weekend just going through and, and our, our links and blah blah. Yeah, and you know, I had mentioned least favorite, but I couldn't even think of any really. No, I'm not gonna do no, that. No, I, I don't I don't hate the players, I hate the game. If you were if I don't find your singing interesting, it's because I find it dull. And if I find it dull, it's because the music industry wants music to be dull. So I I do not blame the, you know, if you if you want to live nicely with hot running water now. Be dull. I wanted to say a runner-up for me was Arthur Lee from the band Love. Good it's amazing. Um, and Charles Manson connection. <laughs> Charles Manson did all right too on his album. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the lawbreaker. I'm the lawmaker. Although I guess Terry Melcher wasn't a fan. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so recommendations. Recommendations. Yes. I thought this would be a, a fitting one because it has to do with a vocalist. Um, but it's an old album. It's from 1966, and it's called Colors. It's by a man named Ken Nordine, or Nordine. Oh, he has an amazing voice for, like, uh, like trailers and, like, radio and stuff. It's very, like, deep and um, just kind of alluring. And apparently he was 
commissioned by this paint company to do a couple of color jingles. And this guy, Dick Campbell, wrote the music for all these songs. And they ended up doing 34 of them. And this album is amazing. It, it's kind, At times, it's kind of like bothersome. I don't know how to explain it, but he talks about colors in a way that it's, I guess it's considered a word jazz album. Um, but the guy seems pretty cool. He did a bunch of cool stuff. Just looked at his Wikipedia page. Um, but yeah, so check out Colors by Ken Nordin. And you gangs of LA will never die. Just multiply colors. So, you can find you can find some of the songs on YouTube. Yeah. Um, I'm going to recommend uh, some YouTube videos by uh, a gentleman, a British comedian and presenter named Richard Ayuade. Um, he did a couple of different shows, Gadget Man and Travel Man, I think in the like um, 20 teens. Um, see, I think he got he claimed to claim to fame that came to fame in the Brit British TV show called the IT crowd. Oh, yeah. um, he has a very sort of droll style, which maybe some people don't really get or like, um, but I think he's pretty funny. Um, uh, so both of these shows were done in like the 20 teens. And I only realized that when I was watching one of the gadget man shows and he's like showing different gadgets and he's riding in this strange a vehicle with a, another guy from the BBC, and he hands him a pair of Google glasses, which is pretty funny. Uh, so it was like from 2014. Of course, we all know where Google glasses went. Um, anyway, I think it, they're pretty funny. He also does a travel show where he takes a, a, a friend, usually another British comedian or uh, somebody like that, and they go to a place for like 48 hours. Um, the one I watched... Um, First was they go to Copenhagen for uh, 48 hours. So it was pretty amazing. Anyway, I recommend it. They're lighthearted, fun, and uh, check them out. I think he also may have had a hand in Garth Berenge's Dark Place, which is yeah. one of the, the four pillars of our existence. And <laughs> yeah, he does he does filmmaking. He's a director. And uh, yeah, he's been very successful. So he's, he, did he's a voice, he does a voice for a cartoon called Apple and Onion. That's kind of funny. Okay. Yeah. All right, since we're doing great voices, my first recommendation is, uh, and this is, of course, for music that you won't see on the tel hear on the television or see on the radio or whatever I call that. Uh, this is going to be uh, Kaylin Mikla, uh, that lovable trio from Iceland. They're really spooky, but I love their lead singer's voice. If you're not familiar with them, please check them out. I came across them on some weird German TV show. This little footage of them the other day just popped up in my YouTube feed. And I was like, wow, this is really weird. They're almost like playing in what looks like a high school gymnasium where they look really tiny with a big backdrop. But yeah, if you're Caitlin Mikla, um, people check them out. You will love them. Again, uh, uh, their lead singer has an amazing voice. Up next, my recommendation is RARG. That's R-A-R-G. Um, it is a short animated film from 1988. I think Joe might have been with me 35 years ago, sitting there with me when I saw it. I think, Joe, you and I went to the, an animation festival. But I seem to remember in my memories, you're watching it with me. Um, RARG is an, a, a, a tiny little animated film. It's about 22 minutes long, and it's perfect. It's about a civilization of discoverers. And then one day they make a very weird discovery and then they have to deal with it. I, I rarely, if ever, recommend family-friendly stuff because I'm family-friendly ruins everything. But you could watch this with your kids. This is smart enough for kids, but entertaining enough for adults. And it is really, really good. It's outstanding. I've been, I keep thinking about it every couple months for 35 years. And I thought, well, wait a minute, maybe that's on YouTube. And it is. It's on YouTube for free. Sit down and watch it. I guarantee you will enjoy it. Uh, if you know young people, show it to young people. And they're going to be like, wow, that is amazing. Um, and then the last thing I want to recommend is people customize your gear. Um, I, I customized this group box and we'll put up the pictures, but I, I went to a, um, a flea market not that long ago and Crash Bang Boom had a booth there and I bought this little devil skull. And then what I did was I was like, I told Rob, my friend Rob, I'm going to do something with it. And what I did was I drilled it out. And when I drilled it out, all this white powder went everywhere. So the devil is filled with white powder. Uh, and then I uh, um, sized it up and I've got it attached and it makes this great little volume knob. I'm going to get a bunch of these. Yeah, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a whole bunch of them and put them on there uh, and and put them out there. But it fits the aesthetic of my studio, which looks like a weird 
1920s occult laboratory. So I'm, I'm really happy with it. But yeah, customize your stuff. Don't be afraid, people, and, and play around with it and make it make it your own personal stuff. All right, those are my recommendations for this week. I recommend a movie called Weird, the Al Yankovic story, which is streaming on the Roku channel. And it is, I'm almost certainly certain it's 100% fake, yes. except for the music, but it's funny in Weird Al uh, co-wrote it. So it's funny in the Weird Al way that things are funny, uh, like a parody of music biographies. But it's also, in the, it's in the vein of that uh, Walk Hard, kind of, that kind of funny, <clears throat> in a Weird Al kind of way. <laughs> Yeah, every I have yeah, I, I've been meaning to see it because you know I have the Roku chat. Everybody I know who's seen it loves it. So I, I it's like on my list of stuff I, I've got to get to. Yeah, I listen I listened to an interview on uh NPR the other day with Terry Gross, um Fresh Air with Weird Al. It's pretty good. That's that's the pairing we've all been waiting for. <laughs> I, I hope it went better than Gene Simmons. I was rooting for Gene Simmons <laughs> in that interview. I don't know. I just did they, they ever um release the audio for that the G yeah i've heard it it's it's, it's yeah. out there somewhere yeah it's out I there yeah the transcript of the interview yeah. gene right. simmons didn't make our list of great singers though who didn't no gene simmons did yeah, not gene simmons didn't make never it. will no. <laughs> although i don't know i, I kind of i like i like paul's voice and ace has got ace has got a good voice no peter's voice is okay kiss sucks <laughs> it really I don't know. I love I love Strutter. Like I that used to be a thing. We used oh, to have, <laughs> there used to be a fluid here. There used to be a, a really cool like music night many many years back, and they would often play Strutter. I'm like, God, I love this song, Strutter. Also, you got the great Kiss line. She's a dancer, a romancer. She's a Capricorn, and I'm a Cancer. <laughs> Somebody had to get up in the morning. I remember in, uh, brush their teeth. I remember, I remember Dave Blood had, I think, a cop, uh, like the double album was it Kiss Alive too? Yeah. And uh, John Worst, Johnny Worcester, that Johnny Worcester kid came over and he, for Dave, he inter he autographed it as Kiss and <laughs> on display in his apartment. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh.